Marketers who automate lead nurturing see a 451% increase in qualified leads. If you're running an e-commerce business or handling the marketing for a company, HubSpot's automation tools can help you achieve that same growth. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use HubSpot's marketing automation tools to nurture your leads, build deeper customer relationships, and streamline your entire marketing process. Hi, I'm Angel. I'm a marketing specialist working in tech, and this is how to HubSpot. If you want to follow along with this video, you can actually get started with HubSpot's marketing automation tools completely for free. Just click the link in the description box below. Starting with lead nurturing, one of the most important things that an email campaign can do for you. Lead nurturing is essential for guiding your potential customers through the buyer's journey. It keeps your brand top of mind while delivering the right message at the right time, which is pretty much what marketing is all about. HubSpot makes it super easy to set up an automated email campaign so that you don't have to worry about reaching out. Let's take my mug business, for example. To incentivize customers to buy one of my beautiful handmade mugs, I could include an email newsletter signup form on my website that will give them 15% off their first order. To do this, I'll have to create a pop-up CTA or call to action to give them that 15% off. So we're going to head over to the marketing tab and then down to CTAs. From here, we're going to go ahead and create a new call to action. HubSpot actually has a ton of amazing pre-built templates to get you started that are completely customizable. So you just have to choose one that works for you. I'm gonna use the discount offer pop-up. This pop-up doesn't really suit the branding of a mug site. So we're just gonna make some edits to it. Going over to the design tab, I'm first gonna look at the background of this pop-up. I'm gonna just go ahead and switch the image to something that works more for my brand. Let's use something like this. Next, we're gonna edit the text to make sure it matches our offers. So I'm gonna write, get 15% off your first order of handmade mugs. I'm gonna change the text color so that it's more visible. And I'm gonna change the font so that it suits my brand more. Once you're happy with the text in the background, we're gonna start creating a new form for this pop-up. I'm gonna call it mugs 15% off. Besides having just an email field, I also wanna collect their first name as well because it's gonna make it easier for me to personalize my emails moving forward. So we're gonna do name, first name. I'll move that above the email field and then I'll make sure to make that one required as well. You can make other adjustments to it, like adjusting the font to make sure it actually matches the rest of the call to action. In the styles tab, you can also adjust the color of the button as well. So I'm going to make it a dark green because that is the color of my brand. Once the aesthetics and the function is all set, you can head over to the targeting tab to decide when will this pop-up be shown. So I want this to be shown on trigger intent as well as after elapsed time, but you also have the option on button click, on page scroll, or after a certain amount of inactivity. Now let's review and publish, and it's as easy as that. You have your very first pop-up call to action that will live on your website. Pop-ups are a great way to catch attention while immediately adding value for your customers. Now, once we've collected their name and their email, we'll then be moving the customer into our automated email campaign. To get started with your email drip campaign, we're gonna go over to automations and then workflows. Next, we're gonna create a new workflow and we're gonna do it from template to make it easier for ourselves. The template that works perfectly for this scenario is the send an email series when a form is submitted. So we're gonna use that one. From here, we're gonna make sure we set the trigger as that form that we just created. So I'm gonna go back to change the trigger type. We'll hit when an event occurs, and then we'll type in form and go to form submission. To point out that specific form, we're gonna add criteria and go to the form name, and then go to mugs 15% off. Save that, and now we have our new trigger. Since we offer that 15% off in our call to action, we wanna make sure the first email reflects that as well. So click that first email box, and then we're going to go ahead and create a new email. Let's scroll down and go to e-commerce welcome. That seems like it'll be the perfect template. Once again, let's make this email our own by editing it so it actually suits my branding. So we're gonna go up to logo. We're gonna switch this out for my, for muggles only, mug business logo. I know, very cute. We're also going to make sure we switch out the image and replace it with a mug image from our business. 
Let's go ahead and change out the pattern as well. I'm gonna edit pattern and maybe we'll do something like this. We're gonna make sure we add in that 15% off discount. So we're gonna add use code welcome15 for 15% off your first order of handmade mugs. Once you're happy with that email, we can head back to the workflow page and select that email to be added as the first email of this campaign. Then we can move on and think about what else we want to include in this workflow. Some best practice emails to include in your welcome trip campaign could be a brand story email to really build that personal connection with your customers, an email to highlight your best selling products, which can give them a ton of product information while reinforcing their buying decision, or even an email sharing how they can connect with you. Do you have social media? Do you have a Facebook group? How else are they able to engage with your brand? You can even incentivize them with limited time offers. So if they haven't purchased anything after a certain amount of days, then you can offer them a deeper discount that only lasts for 24 hours. Finally, always end your email drip campaigns with an engagement email. This should come after 10 to 14 days and really should just be an email to keep the relationship alive. If you have a loyalty program, you can share this here or you can just get them excited on future launches and events. Before we wrap up, here are some bonus rapid fire tips to give you all the best practices of marketing automation. Number one, personalization is key. If you have all this amazing customer data, Data, why not use it? At the very least, address your customers by name in the emails. Number two, keep it simple. Don't overwhelm yourself with too many automations and workflows. Start with just one simple email drip campaign and then expand when you see results. Number three, keep in mind where in the buyer's journey your customers really are when you're sending out specific emails. Are they in the awareness stage, the consideration stage, or the decision-making stage? Make sure your communications are aligned with that. Number four, time Timing matters. The timing of your automated workflows is crucial to their effectiveness. Use HubSpot's data to understand when the customers are the most active and then schedule your emails accordingly. And lastly, don't over automate. Don't bombard your customers and leads with way too many emails and messages. HubSpot's tools allow you to control the frequency of your communication so that you're staying top of mind without being spammy. With HubSpot's marketing automation tools, you can nurture your leads, engage with your customers more effectively, and automate your entire marketing process, which helps you save time while driving better results. That's what I call a win-win. If you haven't already, give HubSpot's automation tools a try and create your very first workflow by clicking the link below. And don't forget to subscribe for more HubSpot tutorials and tips. I'm Angel. I'll see you in the next video.